Your Royal Highness, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of you and women, it is my great honor to be here with you this evening for the 2016 GemTech Award, together with our great partners in the ITU. Today marks the third year of our joint commitment to hold this global recognition of individuals and organizations working to empower women in and for ICTs. I want to sincerely thank Mr. Hu Ling Zhao for his commitment and leadership in this important partnership. I also want to congratulate the wide network of women leaders from around the world who are here with us tonight and who are at the forefront of our common efforts to ensure that women and girls are active participants in the digital world. The 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development recognizes the incredible potential of the ICTs in transforming the lives of women and girls. But we also know that this change is not automatic. To realize that goal, we need targeted investments in women and girls, not just as beneficiaries of the new digital economy, but as its creators and decision makers. And the GEM Tech Award is unique because it has allowed us to showcase great initiatives from around the world to show what this can look like in practice. Empowering women and girls in science and technology is no longer an option, it's a necessity. And women are acutely underrepresented in ICTs, making up just 15% of top decision makers in the sector. And as all of you know, technology is a fast-growing industry that provides tremendous opportunities for employment and for women to create wealth. But these changes could also exacerbate inequalities, especially for women who are overrepresented in sectors such as garments manufacturing and electronics, where machines are increasingly replacing labor. So it's critical that we support women to develop the technical and core skills that they need to take advantage of the opportunities that these changes offer. And we know that the benefits of doing so are immense. It is estimated that 90% of future jobs will require ICT skills. And this is why we at UN Women are investing significantly in building women's digital literacy and skills. At the global level, we have embarked on the development of two targeted global ICT programs. One is the virtual school, which aims to provide women and girls, including the most marginalized, with digital access um, to skills and second chance opportunities for millions of girls who have either been deprived of education or who have dropped out of formal education systems for one reason or another. The second is a technology-based mobile enterprise platform that would create and facilitate large communities of women entrepreneurs in various sectors across developing countries. And within Asia and the Pacific, UN Women has joined many innovative initiatives that use ICTs to increase women's economic and political empowerment and to eliminate gender-based violence. In Pakistan, for example, we have supported the development of a tech-based food ordering platform that increased livelihood opportunities for women home-based food vendors. In Papua New Guinea, we are helping women market vendors to use cashless payment systems, which has allowed them to increase their earnings, avoid and bypass corrupt middlemen, and reduce their vulnerability to violence. And in the Philippines, we have led efforts to promote safer public spaces for women and girls using mobile technologies. For example, by organizing a safe city hackathon, which has challenged tech experts 
to develop mobile safety apps to combat sexual harassment and ensure that women and girls are safe in public spaces. As all of these examples illustrate, and as we will see and learn tonight, women and girls around our region and indeed around the world are already innovating and using the power of technology to find creative solutions to improve their own lives and those of their families and communities. And we all have an obligation to support these women and girls as the leaders of today and tomorrow to ensure that their rights are realized online and offline. And as we present the awards to the 2016 winners, I can assure you it was not an easy pick. All the winners you'll see here tonight have gone above and beyond to reach the stage. And as you continue on your journey, we look forward to giving you more support, resources, and opportunities to expand on your amazing work and to take it even further. And more importantly, we want to help spread the word and share your success stories so that they can inspire the rest of the world and to help even more women and girls follow in your footsteps. So once again, a big congratulations to all of the winners, all of the finalists, and everyone who joined and contributed to this incredible event. We celebrate you, we salute you, and we wish you a pleasant evening. Thank you very much.